put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. I'm King, 1994, video game review. Sega Genesis version. A lion grows up and does a bunch of different stuff. That's essentially the plot of The Lion King according to this game, which doesn't even attempt to convey the actual plot of the movie. I guess you are just supposed to have come straight from the theater and just, you know, recognize the settings and thus know where we even are in the story. This is an abusively difficult game. I mean, some of these Disney tie-in games really suck, but this is... This might be the worst of them, actually. The least fun, the most challenging, and just, you know, there's challenging, and then there's just the unfair kind of challenging. You know, I love when a video game really, you know, makes you bring your A game, but this actually, I'm going to be drawing comparisons to Hercules, because it has some of the same problems. I wish I could compare it to Aladdin, but really, other than both of them being 2D platformers, yeah, no such luck. Go play Aladdin instead. I guess I'll start with a 3D, because fortunately there's very little of it in this one, you know. In Hercules there's much more, but in this, it's actually much worse. Basically, there's only one 3D segment, and it's the Stampede. And, yeah, you know, you're running around from Wildebeest, is that what they're called? And, basically, you're running straight at the camera, so you can't see, like, where you're running. That doesn't matter too much, because the only thing in front of you are occasional rocks. And you do get warning of those, although figuring out the timing is a pain, because... Yeah, it's just, it, it'll flash the, you know, where the rock will be, but it's difficult to figure out how long you have before it actually appears. And this isn't like the carpet ride in Aladdin, where you can actually see it, you know, with just enough time to at least move out of the way, as long as you're not, you know, straight up in where it's supposed to be. But what's worse, however, is that the 3D is keeps it so ambiguous where these wildebeest are going to go that suddenly they will sort of turn and run right into you because of how screwed up the perspective of the level is. It's a real... Ugh, I, I have no idea how, you know, why people got through it. I, just, I only got through this because I got to... I get to bitch at my video camera about it. I, I have no idea how people did this back in 1994. Now, as for the other, you know, comparisons and where both games really suck, is that this, that they're both challenging in that your character reacts a little too slowly. Actually, in this, Simba also sometimes reacts too swiftly. So, you know, yeah, regardless, you're, you're screwed either way. The enemies can stun you for longer than you can stun them, and, you know, with much greater ease. And just, you know, ranged attacks is again an issue. You know, at least Hercules could pick up those lightning bolts that, you know, pretty limited ammunition, but at least they were there. In this, I don't know, well, you, you can roar, but, you know, that doesn't have that much range, at least when you're a kid, and once you grow up, I'm not sure you 
really have any use for it. I don't think you, I found any use for the adult Simba roar. But, yeah, and, you know, frankly, without a manual, you can just barely tell how you're supposed to dispatch of the enemies, you know. I, I'll give you a hint. You have to think like, you know, Mario Brothers with, you know, jumping on the, you know, on the top of enemies, you know. I'm sorry, did that, was, was that just figured as obvious back in 1994? Well, you know, it's a platform game, you can't shoot, so obviously you just have to jump onto the enemies. You know, why, I'm sorry, how is that obvious? You know, you could have given him some kind of, I don't know, charge attack. You know, have him pull one of those moves that he does with, what's his... N Nala, maybe? Or is that his mother? Anyway, the, the female lion that Simba hangs out with as a kid, you know, they, like, wrestle, and you're yeah, sure, sure he sucks at it, but, I mean, that could be an attack. But no, instead, you just have to jump on top of enemies, because, originality, what's that? If you ever wondered where the goose-stepping horde of hyenas went after the be-prepared song-slash-spoken word, they went into this game. I, you fight scores of these frickin' hyenas, and it's practically the only enemy that's actually from the movie. You know, except for, yeah, obviously the end boss, you know. And they're actually a good example of what's really wrong with this game, because they have this, it's, it's similar to a one of these, one of those bad fighting games where the enemy will just do a bunch of combos out into the air and you better not be standing there. You know, and you just gotta wait for them to finish all the combos, you know, and then you go in and attack a little while they have, you know, a tiny little window for attack, then run back and wait for them to do that. Only in this, they'll actually try to hunt you down while they, you know, they will jump and, and you sort of have to figure out when they're gonna jump so you can run in under them. But, here's the, ki here's the kicker, you're usually attacked by more than one enemy at a time. So what you do to avoid one enemy might send you straight into the claws of the other enemy, and you're screwed. You know, the, that actually goes for that tiny window of attack, you know, if you just manage to time it right and get in there and attack the, say, say it's hy hyena, hyena. The moment you're, you know, because that takes several seconds, you know, and once you actually manage to get in the window, it's not terribly difficult to, you know, be mauling the crap out of the enemy. But the other hyena won't just wait for you to finish that, because, again, you know, fairness, city in Russia all, all of a sudden, and it might actually screw up you're using that tiny window of attack to maul the other enemy so that the other enemy doesn't lose very much health at all. And, yeah. And usually, and, and when, they're, when they're actually doing the combos, either you can't hurt them at all, or you, you can hurt them, but you'll take damage yourself. And of course, you have less health than any of the enemies. And finding health pickups is not necessarily that easy, and there are way too few checkpoint saves in this game, by the way. The... The level design is actually not terrible. If they didn't constantly throw crap your way, it would be almost enjoyable to, you know, run through the levels and find your way through the levels, although good luck figuring out what you can actually grab a hold of and what you can't. You'll lose a bunch of lives just jumping in and falling all the way down because, oh wait, you couldn't grab that one, you had to grab the next one. You know, at one point, you're seriously attacked by, I'm not kidding, Donkey Kong. Okay, I'm sorry, it's a monkey, it's throwing rolly stuff, what is that, by the way? Is it throwing its food? Is it throwing giant fruits? I have no idea what they are. And you have to jump to avoid those, or in general just, you know, avoid those bouncy things, and eventually get, you know, all the way over to it. I'm sorry, it's that's Donkey Kong, you know, and I have no idea what he's doing in this game, and again, not from the movie, you know. However, this does use a lot of animation from the movie, so when Simba moves, both as a kid, I guess, and an adult, it looks right, you know, it looks exactly the way, especially when he's fighting, you know. 
but yeah, just in general, it looks right. You know, the roar, both as a kid as an adult, it looks right. The slash attack that you actually gain once you become an adult, which is actually useful, unlike all the useless attacks that you have as kid. Well, attacks. You know, you can roar and you can jump. That's it. Now. And it does use, you know, a bunch of locations from the movie, although why you go to the scene of Be Prepared as an adult near the game, I have no idea, because Simba wasn't even present at that, and it took place when he was a kid, so... Don't ask. The music is there as well, and it's actually not completely terrible sound quality, you know, it was 94, it was getting towards getting better. This doesn't... the... it does have a bunch of levels, so you know, if you actually do find yourself getting into it, there's a pretty good amount of different levels, and you know, it takes you through a bunch of the different scenes. Like I said, the Be, the be Prepared is completely out of place, but at least it, it is there, you know, and it does look like. I mean, if it hadn't said be prepared at, you know, with text at the beginning of that level, I would still have connected it to be prepared, you know, the whole, the, the, the color scheme and the whole thing. And they do this cool little thing, which is kind of showing off. At the beginning of I Just Can't Wait to Be King, the color scheme changes just like when, you know, the music really kicks in in the film, so that's nice. Now, during I Just Can't Wait to Be King, they actually also, that's where they fit in the most stuff that's from the film, I'd say, or at least in one place. You know, you, you ride an ostrich, you I don't know, slide down the backs of, uh, and necks of giraffes, you know, stuff like that. But, yeah. And, and it's actually one of the not terrible levels, because it has this sort of puzzle, which... It's, it's cool enough, and at least it's not constantly throwing crap away. Actually, I think I'll get back on that point, because I don't think I've covered it quite adequately. The game will have you be attacked by someone, and it'll have, I don't know, let's say rocks falling down, or lightning strikes, or something else. Just, it'll constantly be having things unexpectedly happen around you that can hurt you. And again, you have very little health, and health is hard to come by, you know, health pickups. And so, you just, you, you do not see the danger until it's too late. A lot of the time, and again, that's not, that's not a fun kind of challenge. You know, that's just annoying, frustrating, you know. I, if the makers of this game are ever found dead, I would do a cavity search for copies of this game. And my, you know, first suspects would be, you know, people who expressed anger. Maybe I should stop this video. The... I'm not sure there's much else left to say. It's of... It's not a terribly long game. I'd say you can complete it in roughly two hours, same as Hercules. Again, once you know what you're doing, you know. And that actually, yes, that does bring me to some more of why this game sucks. At least Hercules has a password system. It might be difficult to come by those four vases so you'll actually get the password, but at least there is a chance. In this, if you lose all your lives, you just have to start all over, and you might not even know. That's the the kind of challenging that this is. It's not like you do something wrong and then you have another idea for how to do it. No, you just die suddenly and, or not suddenly, but you die and you're like, well, what was I supposed to do? And you can try again. You can waste all your lives. You know, you might actually, this is a game that is so frustrating and right from the start, you know, I mean, Okay, the first level, you can complete. There's not really a challenge there, that it doesn't particularly throw anything difficult your way. But from there on out, right from the second level, which is, I just can't wait to be king, almost immediately, like, you'll, you're sliding down giraffe's bang, and you're like, oh, this is from the movie, oh, whoa, crap, and you die. Because you didn't know that you had to jump there at the end, you know, it didn't... It's just not obvious what you're supposed to do and what you're supposed to avoid. Riding that ostrich is actually 
an excellent way to burn through your lives because I mean, at first you're just you're you're ducking once, you're jumping once, and then suddenly it asks you to jump twice. You're like, okay, I'll try, and you blow it, you blow it, and you blow it a couple more times before you even figure out how do I do this? How do I time this right? You know, it is not obvious. The game fails to communicate. You know what is even dangerous and what isn't. How do I approach the danger? You know. Now, also through near the end. There's a frickin' maze! What is a maze doing in this game? And it just... Yeah, it's extremely frustrating. You you literally have to, I, I guess, just sit there with a pen and paper and just note, okay, that was the wrong door, now I have to kill all those hyenas again. Because it keeps... There are a bunch of doors that lead back to areas you already went through. And sometimes... And here's the real kicker. You have to go through two rooms before you figure out that you're on the wrong path. It's not just like you go through a door and, oh crap, that was the wrong one. Oh, okay, I can kill these and then go back through a door or something and then I'll be back to an area I know. No, no. You have to go through a couple of areas that don't get you anywhere, you know, before you even realize, oh, well, this, I've seen this, so, yeah. You know, and sometimes you have to defeat like, I don't know, four or five hyenas in one area, which is just insane with how challenging just one can be. You know, and again, the moment that there's two in one area, yeah, you're screwed. By the way, why, why do you fight, I don't know what they're called, large cat beings with spots on them. I know what they're called in Danish. I don't, I'm not an animal person. I don't know what they're called in English. Why do you fight them? I, I don't think they were even in the movie at all. Like, a couple of the other creatures, I'm pretty sure your one of your main enemies, like this salamander thing, I'm pretty sure that appears at least some point in the movie, just once, you know, it's not an enemy or anything. But, yeah, sure, okay, you got that idea from there. And what's with those, what's it called, like, porcupines? What are those doing here? Are the, Do those even... Are those even common in Africa or whatever, however, wherever this movie takes place? Went through all the Evers. And one level, Hakuna Matata. By the way, you never actually meet up with Timon and Pumbaa, except for, you know, the bonus levels actually has you controlling one of them. And the bonus levels are that fun kind of bonus level where you don't necessarily know exactly what to do and failing once will cost you the bonus level, you know. Again, just... The people who made Aladdin did this right, you know. Sure, the Aladdin one can be annoying and you can feel a little cheated if you... You know, basically that one was... Just, it was going through a bunch of different things, and if you click it at the wrong time, it'll be Jafar. But basically, if you have extremely fast reflexes and you take your time with it, it that one wasn't even on a time limit. Every Timon and Pumbaa level has either a time limit or some uh, other kind of thing. And you'll just exactly have read the instructions when you usually just fail, at least the first attempt, you know, because it'll just say... You know, and, and that's also the thing, this never lets you breathe. This never gives you just a less frustrating, challenging, you know, moment. I mean, sometimes when the end of a level actually sort of doesn't, you know, t t when, when the end of a level goes through some animations, you know, before it throws you into the next one, then you can breathe just a little bit. But otherwise, I don't know, I guess you just have to pause and, you know, force yourself to take a break. But, yeah, again, pacing. It exists in video games as well, you know. But yeah, Timon and Pumbaa, only in the bonus levels that you're bound to mess up at least the first try, and, yeah. And find, get into the bonus levels. I, I think you're supposed to find something in the level that will grant you access to the bonus level or something like that. I have no idea what it is. I don't have a manual for this game. And a bunch of the pickups, I don't even know what do. 
like when I pick it up, I can maybe see, ah, okay, that's what it is. Well, if I'm lucky, half the time, you know, some of the bugs, but basically all the pickups are bugs, and then there's this sun thing that I have no clue what does. One of the bugs seems to extend your life bar, but that appears to only be for that life or something. At least I don't think that I had an extended life bar for the rest of the game, but yeah. You know, again, I mean, when I play Hercules, at least I can tell because the the pickups are very different looking and it kind of makes sense. You pick up some of that juice stuff that he, you know, tries to sell in the movie and, you know, some of that merchandising stuff and it refills your health. You can see that and it's like, oh, right, you know, pick up something, you know, that's basically food. <laughs> you know, soft drinks. Anyway, you pick up something that will nourish your body in some way. Let's just go with that theory. And it refills your health. That makes sense, you know, you and you pick up the the figure of Hercules, you know, the, the tiny little action figure, and it extends your life bar. Again, you know, the first time you before you pick it up, you might not know what it does, then you pick it up and then you're like, oh, okay, I guess that makes sense. It's an icon of him and it makes him stronger. Sure, whatever. In this they don't look exactly the same, but they're just different colored bugs. I mean, could you not have thought of something else and maybe made it a little obvious? You know, the game is very sparse on the instructions in general and it certainly isn't going to tell you what the different pickups do. In the Hakuna Matata level, getting back to that, for some reason you fight spiders, by the way, in that level. I'm not sure there are even spiders in the movie, again, anyway. In that level, there is one of the single most frustrating aspects of the entire game. You have to ride on these logs up a waterfall, basically. I think this is something like that. And at first you just have to jump from log to log to even get to the waterfall. And what you don't know the first time you jump onto a log is it has like less than a second of life once it's on the water before it, you know, just sinks and if you're still on it, you're gonna drown. So you just gotta jump from you know, one to the other really quickly for not very long, and then you get to the waterfall itself. And basically, one type will go very quickly down the waterfall and the other type will go very slowly down. And guess what happens when it goes gets all the way down to the bottom? Yeah, you drown. Again, losing a life. And you have to go all the way up this and it just takes forever and you can just tell I'm not even making any progress. It's just, the game is like demoralizing, you know? If, if ever the US administration needs to covertly interrogate someone, forget waterboarding, just make them play this game. Tell them that they don't get, you know, I don't know, tell them that they have to play through this game before they get to do anything else. You know, that will be enough. And I suppose I should talk briefly about the final level. I'll try to keep it spoiler free. But basically, if you've watched the movie, you know what the final level is going to be. And yes, there's, of course, of, co of course, that boss fight. That's how we talk down in Boston. I think that's what it is. Anyway, obviously, the setting and that boss fight you know, they go without saying for anyone who's watched the movie. And again, if you haven't watched the movie and you play this game, it basically does spoil it. I mean, it doesn't give away any of the story, so you're, you're basically going to be, where am I? Who's that? What's that? But anyway, yeah. That's actually one of the easiest levels in the entire game, for some reason, and the end boss fight. Although it is admittedly somewhat satisfying to complete it, but maybe that's just because that meant I was free of this game. It's the easiest fight in the entire game. Like, that final, excuse me, that final boss has nothing on the regular enemies. Just, yeah, I... Also, this game takes far too long before Simba is finally an adult. Because he is useless as a kid. As a kid, you just have to suffer through the levels before he finally gets, again, that claw attack. Which, by the way, doesn't actually alter the fact that going up against hyenas, you still often have to fight two in a row, or two, two at the same time, not two in a row. Two at the same time, and even though you're bashing at, you're slashing at one of them with your claw, 
it's still going to, you know, it still might suddenly just attack you back, and then you you're stunned for a second, and then the other one might attack you, or even just. Even if the first one you're attacking doesn't attack back, even if you can just keep wailing on it, or maybe even get to the point where there, there's, again, that tiny window of opportunity for hurting it, you go in there, try to maul it, the other one comes right at you. So, you know, it doesn't make a huge difference in that regard. But yeah, that final level, really easy. That final boss, really easy. And guess what? You don't even get anything out of completing this game. There's not like a good cinematic there at the end. It's just nothing. It doesn't even close off the story, really. It just delivers, you know, it's basically a clip. You know, it's basically animation that is similar to the movie. It's not even a clip of the movie, you know. I, yeah, actually, I don't think this has any clips of the movie whatsoever. It has a few audio clips, but nothing that really tells you anything. Oh, and you do get an audio clip there at the end as well. And yeah, that's that's it. And roll credits and back to the menu. Do you want to play again? <laughs> no, not ever. Please rate and comment. And hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.